Kuala Vinaka, my name is Letia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tabua. We love Today FM in Tabua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selina, I'm from Tawenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Hola, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in Today FM in Malak Ellen. Today FM rock. Today's hit music on Today FM. Tonight, Prime Minister returns from Australia tour. No threat from Cyclone Donna near Vanuatu. And Rewa adopts descendants of indentured laborers. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. Suva magistrate Sagit Somaratne says attacks on taxi drivers are becoming more prevalent. While sentencing a man for aggravated robbery, Magistrate Somaratne pointed out the risk of personal harm taxi drivers take every day by simply going about their business. Shireen Shivan reports. Police below! It was this incident which went viral on social media soon after the attack on the taxi driver in Namandi Heights, Suva, on 29th September 2016. Samuel Avuniwawa stole the taxi driver's mobile and some cash and fled the scene. He was arrested by police a month later. Vuniwawa was charged with one count of aggravated robbery and was found guilty by the Suva Magistrates Court. While sentencing Vuniwawa to 10 years imprisonment this afternoon, Magistrate Somaratne said Vuniwawa not only brutally attacked the taxi driver, but stole his properties in broad daylight and also tried to hijack the car. The magistrate further pointed out that the robbery has left traumatic memories on the victim and those who witnessed the incident from their homes. Magistrate Somaratne said the lengthy imprisonment sentence will denounce the behavior of the criminals, deter future offenders and will protect the public. Vuniwawa is eligible to apply for parole after eight years. The court says aggravated robberies can only be improved by harsher deterrent sentences against those who hurt and harm the public service transport drivers. Sharin Shivan, FBC News. Prime Minister Vorenge Mbaini Marama has returned home, wrapping up a four-day campaign in Australia to garner support for Fiji's presidency of COP23. Mbaini Marama met his Australian counterpart Malcolm Turnbull, appealing for lobbying of US President Donald Trump in regard to the Paris Agreement. Turnbull met with President Trump in New York today. Incumbent COP President... Baini Marama also met with climate policy experts and private sector investors. He also discussed COP23, the purchase of 10 armoured vehicles with Foreign Affairs Minister Julie Bishop. Descendants of indentured labourers will now be called the Luvenda Naratu. In a traditional ceremony this morning, Rewa Paramount Chief Marama Narokotu Inriketi Rote Mumukepa welcomed home the descendants of indentured labourers. Sanyan Mboilo reports. <laughs> It's been 133 years since the Syria ran aground off the Reo shores, and the traditional ceremony called Waka Tokayava, the sons and daughters of Kirimitiers, have been accepted by the people of Rewa. Today, this identity will give us a place, and for some reason, for some reason, we've been longing to be one with the people of the land. We hope this opportunity will open doors for new learning and new dialogue so we don't fear each other but can genuinely care for each other as we grow. Maramana Rokutuin Riketi Roti Mumukepa says the return home of the Luvendra Naratu, or sons and daughters of the chief, is a new journey for the people of Rewa. Being Rewan in the, in the tradition in which I was raised means always having to look beyond our individual circumstances and ask what we together can do for the common good. Being identified as Lubwendra Naratu is something these descendants will cherish for time immemorial. It has really, really, really touched me. And honestly, I'm telling you now and uh, to the viewers, to the listeners, yes, I feel very much privileged and honored knowing that we belong to a clan here. It has been decades that uh, this thing has happened after 133 years and uh, we really thank the Banuaro of Rewa and the, uh, the uh, chief of uh, Nodo to really accepting us to be our Luvenan Iratu. Thank you very much. 
It took the descendants of the Indian Jared Labors more than 100 years to know the story. From 1835 to this year, it's been a while, but for them, it's worth the wait. Sainiani Mboila, ABC News. Category 3 tropical cyclone Donna headed towards Vanuatu will not pose any direct threat to Fiji. This has been confirmed by the Fiji Meteorology Office this afternoon. Akusit Tale reports. Cyclone Donna, which has intensified into a Category 3 system in the last 24 hours, will not affect the group. It's currently westwards, further away from Fiji, but associated trough cloud and rain bands are forecast from Sunday. We may not be expecting a heavy rain uh, in many parts of the country. However, some rain bands would affect and which will see that uh, the rain, uh, rain is not that significant. However, he says flash flooding in low-lying areas from localized heavy rainfall is expected from this weekend. Not really any widespread. Uh, the, we don't anticipate any heavy rain uh, except for some localized heavy falls that might be associated with the rain bands which will be passing over Fiji. Kumar adds Cyclone Donna is expected to remain a Category 3 system. Vanuatu was left devastated by Category 5 storm Cyclone Pam in 2015, killing 11 people and left around 75,000 in need of emergency shelter. Akusita Tale, FBC News. Still to come, local government minister silences critics and beach demo conservation to continue. Details after the break. Mimbula Vinaka, Naya Vangunga, and the Moala Rada Ranavika, or Tikungana Town of Singapore, and the Talifak and Avarong and Mbula Fan, numbered the way in a serve. We have the Rasubuni Kurnabili, Burani Vatskara and Barabinarna, the Talitakina Varong and Mbula Fan, numbered the way in a serve. Bula Bula FM, numbered the way in a serve. Local government minister Parvin Bala has hit out of critics who opposed his ideas for developments in Latoka. The minister raised the matter at the groundbreaking ceremony for a new aquatic center. Akusita Tale has more. Twelve months ago, Latoka had no artificial track stadium, no major branded shopping center and no aquatic center. This was only made possible through constructive consultation. I was told by the critics, by a handful of people here in Latoka, that I sold Lotoka. I want to ask those critics, those handful of people, what was there to sell? Residents in Lotoka have been guaranteed that developments will not only end with a new aquatic center. Plans are to develop a city that has better facilities for its residents. I can assure the people of Lotoka that there'll be more coming for the city of Lotoka. We have to treat this as a city. We need to have all major facilities here. Then and only we can proudly say, yeah, we stay in a city. Lotoka has not had proper access to recreation facilities in the past years, but things are changing. For those who want to escape the scorching heat of the Western Division, that the division is known for, there will be no other better place than the Democratic Center as you'll have modern facilities to suit your needs. More than 50,000 Fijians live in Lotoka, which plays a very crucial role in the development of the country. Akosita Tale, FBC News. Fiji's Media Freedom Index has improved from last year. According to a survey by the Reporters Without Borders, Fiji has moved up from 80th to 67th. Anna Ravulo tells us more. As journalists celebrate Media Freedom Day this week, the training managing editor of the Fiji Sun says media freedom is slowly improving in Fiji. We, we have media freedom here, you know. We, we, there's, there's nothing to be afraid of, you know, there's a perception, but I think that's a hangover from the past, eh? But, but as long as a journalist here does his or her job, properly cover the basics, there's nothing to worry about. However, we are still ranked the lowest Pacific Island country in terms of media freedom compared to Samoa, Tonga and Papua New Guinea. As journalists, uh, there's, still, there's always room for improvement. While 
media has a lot of power, great power comes with great responsibilities. However, for journalists in the day-to-day -day work, at the back of our minds is always the, the media decree that uh, threatens our life every day, considering that you could get a fine for journalists and for editors is a jail term. Media freedom was celebrated around the globe this week and Norway is currently ranked number one when it comes to media freedom. Anna Ravulo, FBC News. A ban on exporting beach timber will be part of Fiji's voluntary contribution to the Oceans Conference next month in New York. Fisheries Minister Semi Korela Vesau said this after surveys conducted by experts found out that despite the ban introduced on underwater breathing apparatus recently, it makes no difference. Savaira Thumboa has more. Three species of beach dimmer are on the verge of extinction. According to the fisheries minister, Semi Korela Vesau, he was advised by local experts to take further steps in an effort to revive the marine resource. Uh, there's a lot of underground and backyard uh, operations going on in UBA, and there's a lot of uh, illegal activities that are carried out that have continued to uh, harvest beach dimmer. On uh, Monday, we had a consultation on uh, ocean before the ocean conference. I had suggested then that maybe one of the issues uh, that uh, Fiji can take up to the ocean conference is for us to ban the export of uh, beach steamer. Korea Lapsau adds in the past three months, exporting companies were advised not to buy beach steamer that have been caught through illegal means or undersized. But even with instruction and our own uh, team uh, that have been put on the ground to look, have a look at that, that has not stopped them from buying. So the commercial consideration has gone over the social implications on uh, what our people are able to do. The Fiji locally managed marine areas network says it's a wise decision. Uh, it's a good sign and uh, we, support, uh, we support that commitment that uh, the Honourable Minister has made. Uh, we look forward to, to, seeing, to seeing that go through. Clubs House says the issue is not a question of commercial consideration, but a question of social responsibility. We need to think of our future generation. Sabera Tambua, FBC News. This year's TEDx Suva Talks is aiming to have a broader audience through its live streaming platform. Under the international TED guidelines, no more than 100 audience members are allowed. However, through this platform, the organizers hope to increase viewership beyond the audience at the venue. This year's focus will be Fiji's diverse and vibrant ideas through the theme of an ocean of ideas. Younger speaker, 15-year-old Genesis Selena, says she is happy to deliver her message. I just hope that I can give it my best and like get my message out there to everyone and hope that they take something out of it. Ahead in sports with Jamie, the Fiji Sevens is en route to Paris, but joining us now is Rachel with Business. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening and coming up in business tonight. FOCA updates taxpayers' information. And in growing Fiji, multi-million dollar development in Nakasi. Stay with us. I'm Anare Sarbakuroa of Nayabu Wendemburga Televu. Whenever I want to tune in to listen to great music, I always tune in to my favorite radio station, Gold FM, only the classic. My name is Lita. We love listening to Gold FM here at the Fiji Hideaway Resort and Spa. Gold FM, only the classic hits. We here at Tano Waterfront Lotoka love listening to Gold FM, only, only the, the classic, classic hits. hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. In business tonight, the Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority is undertaking a data cleansing project to update current taxpayer registration information. Chief Executive Vashvanath Das says this initiative is undertaken to provide effective transfer, uh, taxpayer services that will enable online lodgement, payment, real-time updates and access to tax information. The project will be done in phases and will begin with companies. Taxpayers can access the information update forms 2017 from FERCA website. The American dollar is on a rise and it's had a big influence on regional currencies. Here's Savanada from HFC Bank to tell us more. Good night, Rachel. The U.S. economic calendar seems to be very active this week, having the most influence on our Fijian dollar. 
Their initial jobless claims reduced from 257,000 to 238,000, outperforming consensus of 247,000. The U.S. unit labor cost for the first quarter increased to 3% from 1.3% when it was expected to increase to only 2.5%. On a five-day moving average, the U.S. currency stands today at 0.4677, just under 47 cents. When compared to the previous week, it had strengthened by 21 points, or 4.5%. Bad news for those making overseas payments in U.S. dollars this week, and those changing their Fijian dollar to travel there. That's it for me, Vinaka Rachel. Thanks, Ave. On to today's exchange rates. The Fijian dollar weakened against the Chinese yuan to close at 322. The American dollar remained steady since yesterday to close at 46 cents. Closer to home, the Australian and New Zealand dollars strengthened to close at 62 and 67 cents, respectively, and the PNG Kino was steady at 130. On to the commodities market, oil prices dropped since uh, yesterday, closing at 45. 40, 45.45 a barrel. Gold followed suit, closing at 1,228 an ounce. And silver remained steady, closing at 16.39 an ounce. In growing Fiji tonight, the Nakasi Modern Village Development Project, a $750 million project with a vision to become a city, has been launched. Developments being with road networks, access and a res residential and commercial center with sites for tourism, hotels and a golf course. Kaeli Vadala has more. It's possibly the largest single development in recent times, a city that includes housing, education, public administration, hospitals and even bus terminals. The world-class city that meets both global and local expectations Two, a modern city with an image that portrays a high standard of administration, education, cultural center, and laser facilities. Three, a strong focal point for tourism, industrial development, and economic activ activities. A private Korean company, Dong A Holdings Limited, is building Nakasi City with investment with the Commissioner Central and all relevant agencies closely monitoring the Nakasi Modern Village development. The company chairman says the newly built city will benefit hundreds of locals. The Nakasi project will ensure a much more advanced city is being built here. This will create a tremendous number of employment opportunities for the locals and also be a major advancement to each community. The project is a long-term investment with milestones in three stages. Nakasi is one of the fastest growing and heavily populated areas in the Nasunu Nosori Corridor. The mission is to build a modern city on these 800 acres of land equipped with all the latest technologies that will be the first of its kind in Fiji. It will also be an added attraction to the central division and greatly benefit the Nakasi residents. Kelly Vathala, FBC News. And that's it from business this evening. Jamie joins you now with sports and he has the latest on the Fiji 7th team that's on its way to Paris. Manaka, Rachel and good evening. That's right. Coming up, the team the nation loves is on its way to the city of love. And Fiji Sports Council warns fans that tickets are selling fast for Super Rugby Clash in Suva. Details after the break. The Vodafone Fiji 7 side is on its way to France for the last leg of the World 7 Series. With one win in eight tournaments, coach Gareth Baber will need to lift the side's performance in Paris and London. Rohit Deo tells us more. The final goodbyes before taking off for another two tournaments. Nothing is easy as you've seen. 
Um, there's teams at different uh, stages, I suppose, in their development, and, and we're certainly at that as well. Um, obviously, it's, uh, my job is to blood new players and uh, develop the experience and the, the strength of the squad, but at the same time pick up wins, and sometimes that's hard to do. Beba has named four new players with at least two guaranteed to make their debut. They've got the right behaviours in the group as well. Um, they've come in, they've followed what they need to do and um, they're disciplined with what they do at all times and that's what I ask of the squad all the time is to work hard and be disciplined. Um, and then obviously uh, then when you're looking for that X factor on top of that. Ford Setareki Bitunyata says the four players have proven their worth and they won't find it difficult to shine on the world stage. Some of us we already play with them, so yeah, uh, they got some good skills with them. So you know that we can uh, help the team and uh, in this uh, two plus legs. The Paris tournament will be played next weekend with Fiji playing Australia, Samoa, and Russia in the pool stages. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. Excitement is building towards the Super Rugby clash between the Waikato Chiefs and Canterbury Crusaders at the NZ Stadium in Suva. Not just in the capital, but in the West as well. The Fiji Sports Council is on a roadshow in the Western Division, promoting the big event and ensuring fans have a chance to buy tickets. Meli Tavanga tells us more. The roadshow kicked off in Singatoka yesterday and was in Nandi today. Super Rugby ticket sales have been good. We can tell the Super Rugby fever is here. The ticket sales have been going from 8 o'clock this morning and they're selling like hotcakes. Uh, we found that the Western Division is buying a lot of embankment tickets, which means that's going to fill up quite quickly, um, and which is also a good thing because we've sold our grandstand tickets fairly quickly and there's limited tickets available. Eh? It's expected Lotoka residents will be turning out for the tickets as well. Um, we can only expect more in Lotoka, uh, and we know this because we've been getting calls throughout yesterday and today asking when are we going to be in Lotoka to do those sales. Fans are already gearing up for the second Super Rugby match hosted in Fiji. My first time to watch the game live I in uh, Super 17 now, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I missed it last year, so it's chance for us to miss out last year to come and see and experience the whole Super Rugby game. Eh? The Fiji Sports Council says 70% of the tickets have been sold and is urging the public not to wait until the last minute to avoid disappointment. Melitavanga, FBC Sports. The Namosi rugby team will take on Malolo in the second round of the Skipper Cup competition tomorrow. The Namosi side will have the services of former Fiji Warriors players such as Captain Mosese Woka, Serpepeli Wularika and Kilevi Naimasi. The match kicks off at 3 p.m. tomorrow at Thompson Park, Navua. Meanwhile, team manager Navitelai Nevalarua says the union is aiming to make it all the way to the top this year. We better this year and uh, reach the final and maybe win the cup uh, with a bunch of uh, players that we have. The Lambasa football side hopes to restore its pride and retain the title as champions of the Fiji FAC tournament a week from now. Elno Turangeview caught up with the team during a training session this morning. Perfecting their skills, the Lambasa soccer team is preparing for the big showdown at Ratudakbao Park in Nosori next week. The Kambau Park is like our second home, it's always has been. And I would uh, urge the supporters to come out in numbers and support us. They have been there in past and we'll look forward for their support. Last year, Lambasa, as the defending champions, bowed out to Nandi in the semi-final. Coach Ronil Lal hopes this will change this time around. Uh, well, our aim is for the first weekend is to qualify for the semis and I believe we'll work hard for that and I believe without hard work you cannot achieve anything so that's our aim just to qualify for the semis. This is the second week of training for the Mbamba Singer side who so far have not had any major setbacks. They are ready to take on Raketi. It will be a tough one. They'll be fresh and uh, Raketi is always uh, hard in tournaments but uh, we'll do our best. Lambasa will take on fellow northern team Riketi in their first pool match on Friday at 5.30 p.m. Eleanor Turangaiwiu, FBC Sports. The Special Olympics Committee today signed a memorandum of understanding with the Fiji Football Association. Athletes with special needs in Fiji now have a chance to develop a future in the sport. There are also plans for members of the national squad to regularly visit children in special schools around the country. Christopher Gemmel, Roy Krishna, a few other, other top players will make a visit to the uh, various schools here and, and then uh, and, uh, interact with these children. So that, uh, because they, they see them in the TV, 
they, they see them in the news media, so in person, and it will really change their life. And Airports Fiji Limited has once again partnered with the Fiji International Golf Tournament. AFL says it's committed to supporting golf tourism and more broadly sports tourism in Fiji. The company says the spon sponsorship will also help AFL promote Fiji to the rest of the world and boost our tourism industry. Arguably one of our most important partnerships as far as we're concerned. Um, you know, the first impressions of Fiji are from the minute you step off the plane and stepping off the plane into world-class facilities is so important for this country. Uh, it's important for, for everyone in it um, and, and how Fiji is represented globally. That's it from sports this evening. Join Cara again later on with your latest weather update. And in our new media segment, we take a look at the brand new Samsung Galaxy S8 that launches in Fiji tonight. That's coming up. Bula, Kero Mai Sinatoka, Kero Ndo Tali Taka Navarro Rong on the Radio Fiji One and Domoy Viti. I have a new thing. It's coming from Kola, Ndo Tali Taka on the Radio Fiji One and Domoy Viti. We have a new thing. 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 Radio Fiji One and Domoy Viti. Radio Fiji One and Domoy Viti in Honga and BNN. In our new media segment, Samsung's newest invention, S8 phones, hits stores tomorrow. One of the local telecommunication providers, Vodafone, is tonight holding the launch of the new device in Suva. We now join Anna Ravulo live. Anna, a lot of talk about this new gadget. Jackie, we're here at GPH for the launch of the Samsung S8 and Samsung S8 Plus by Vodafone. And here with me, we have Todd Selwyn, who is the head of mobile product for Samsung. And he'll be explaining to us what are some of the features of both of these beautiful phones. Hi, good evening. Well, the greatest thing. So brand new phone here tonight with our new Infinity display, HDR resolution, um, Quad HD. All the bezels are gone from the screen. It's all screen, 5.8 inch, 6.2 inch screen. Um, iris scanner, IP68 waterproof, you name it, it's on there. Fast and wireless charging, fantastic. And over here we have Rishnesh Prasad, who is the Chief um, Financial Officer for, um, for Vodafone. Now, Rishnesh, uh, what are some of the, um, I mean, in terms of prices, what can the public expect tomorrow? Yeah, good evening. Uh, for the S8, uh, we'll be retailing at 1999, and for the S8 Plus, we'll be re retailing at 2199. Both the devices are now available at our Vodafone retail outlets from today. And uh, when the doors open for all our retail shops, including our dealer shops, tomorrow, tomorrow morning you, you can get a whole of the new uh, Samsung S8 and S8 Plus. Well, there you have it, Jackie. If you're a Samsung user or you love um, using Samsung, you need to get yourself these beautiful babies, Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Anna. And we turn to weather now with Kara. The weather was warm across Fiji today with light breezes and a few sudden but brief showers in the east. Looking at the west, Nandi Lotoka and Ba all hit a high of 33 degrees under partly cloudy skies, a good day for the resorts. And eastwards from Pacific Harbour to Suva, it was a little cooler, temperatures around 30 with sunshine under partly cloudy skies and occasional brief showers. While up north in Vonor Lebu, Lambasa hit 32 and Sabusa was a little cooler under partly cloudy skies. And at sea, a strong wind warning remains in effect for all Fiji waters with southeast winds gusting to 20 to 25 knots and moderate rough seas. And for the tides, there's low tide tonight at 8.55, followed by high tide tomorrow morning at 3.16. Sunrise will be at 6.22. Looking at tomorrow, it will be much like today with the chance of showers in the east. Mbak could reach a high temperature around 33, while Suba will be cooler. As for Sunday, we can expect more showers due to that tropical cyclone over towards Vanuatu. Currently, no threat to Fiji, but it could pull in some rain. And that's FBC weather for tonight, Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Kara. On Fiji Pulse today, we asked the public, should people be prosecuted for posting crime scene pictures on social media? No. Well, because it helps the police in their investigation. And 
the more the health of Mr. Kenyat, the better it is for us. Uh, certainly, yes, because it uh, invades uh, people's uh, privacy. Yes, I think they should be prosecuted because it's uh, exposing the uh, privacy of the victim. Recapping the main stories, Prime Minister returns from Australia tour, no threat from Cyclone Donna near Vanuatu, and Rewa adopts descendants of indentured labourers. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question, this week we are asking, are we doing enough to help people with depression? Visit our FBC website to answer. And tonight's shot of the day was sent in by Pa Lu, a beautiful sunset at Tradewinds in Lamy. Perfect setting to wind down on a Friday after a hectic week. Send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. Or you can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight from the team and I. Have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Bye for now. हमारा नाम संत कुमार है हम रेडियो फिजी टू सुनता है और ताबुआ में सबसे बेहाल रेडियो फिजी टू है यार हम बिना विमलेश रकविंदी ताबुआ से रेडियो फिजी टू हमारा सबसे फेवरेट स्टेशन है हमारा नाम ब्रूच राव है रेकरे की मार्केट बेंडा और रेडियो फिजी टू देश के दरकन 1954 से हम सुनता है हम कबूली ताबुआ रहता है हमारा नाम है रमेश चंद और हमारी म